Welcome to the Ash Wednesday service of First Lutheran Church of Kenwick, Washington. I'm Pastor J.J. Daggert, and it's very good to have you with us tonight. For the service, there are a couple things that you will need in order to participate uh, later on in the service. First, if you are able to make it over to the church and pick up your packets of ash, please have those ready and available for later on. Uh, if you haven't made those ashes up yet, uh, just use a little bit of oil. Uh, a very small drop will do, and please remember not to use any water. Um, that could really not turn out so well. For the, our service, we are also celebrating Holy Communion, so please be ready with the elements for later on in the service too. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. As we begin our service, the Holy Spirit calls us together as a people of God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Our gathering hymn is, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in the ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a feast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants on the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar of the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read Psalm 51 responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak 
and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom with deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. A reading from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, An acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward, but when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, 
so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my re rock and my redeemer. Amen. I have a pastor friend who admits that he is not the neatest person in the world. It just so happened that his daughter is also not the neatest person in the world. Like many parents who find themselves in frustration, he felt that he had to do something about this. And so one day when she came home from school, he met her just as she came into the house and said, I have good news and I have bad news to tell you. The bad news is that the house was broken into today. The good news is that they only ransacked one room, throwing clothes and hangers and books and plates and papers all over. More good news is that the only room they ransacked was yours. Now, after staring blankly at him for a bit, she rolled her eyes and she went off to clean her room. My friend decided that he too could go and do some tidying of his own and went on to do just that. In many ways, this is, a, this is what the season of Lent is all about. It's about cleaning up our closets and our own rooms. It is 40 days of re-evaluation and restructuring. We clean our closets and our rooms in preparation for presenting a clean house, or maybe in a more biblical sense. And for the season of Lent, it's more like cleaning of a temple. If we use this as a basis for our understanding our scripture readings tonight, and in viewing what it is that we are doing here on this Wednesday night, then we can begin a very important journey toward a renewal and a spiritual wholeness. In our gospel reading tonight, Jesus says, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. I have to say that this passage would seem to be in conflict with our own actions here on Ash Wednesday. Now, normally we would come to church and have ashes placed on our foreheads and then head right back out into the real world. Truthfully now, how many times have you wiped those same ashes from your forehead before you even got into your own car? Sometimes it really is hard to put our own practices next to scripture and to have it make sense, but it does. For just a moment, I want you to imagine this scene. Imagine that Jesus has gathered a great multitude of people who have been following him uh, all around and taking them to a place that was near the Sea of Galilee. Now there's a reason that he came to this place this area, if given just the right amount of wind, could be an amplifier for when somebody was speaking. Now that mass of people would be as diverse as, pos as ever. It would be filled with all the common people of that time. Rabbis and religious leaders and Pharisees and Sadducees would all be there. Jesus' words and deeds and actions drew people from all over to come to see him. He brought people from all walks of life and from all socio and economic differences of that time. As the word of God intended, his word struck in the hearts of, of the hearers in extremely personal ways. 
perhaps to one side of him there was a group of fishermen. And in the other direction, there would have been a large group of merchants. And maybe further back, there would have been the religious leaders who were seeking to judge the words and the teachings of this young rabbi. Those religious leaders would not have been there for evil reasons, but for the same reason that any other pastor would go and listen to a message of another preacher who was drawing the attention of his flock. They would have been there to hear and to assess. They thought that they were possibly protecting their own sheep. Jesus, in his teaching, used many common historical teachings of Judaism, Judaism from that time. And these leaders in the crowds actually heard very little that they could argue with. The younger rabbis that were there would have turned to their own teachers and asked, his teachings are, are true, are they not? Now the older rabbis would have possibly pulled on their beards and given an earnest, thoughtful look, and then nodded their heads slowly up and down. The older rabbis would have been waiting for Jesus to trip him himself up on his own teaching. But we know he wouldn't. And so Jesus would continue on. Jesus would teach them about what type of person would be blessed and how they should respond to the law. Next, Jesus gave the crowds instructions on what they must do to be perfect as God is perfect. And it was here that Jesus would go from preaching to meddling in the eyes of the religious leaders. It was here that Jesus began to strip away the many masks that the people wore to conceal and protect themselves. And as these masks were taken away, hearts began to move either closer to God or farther away from God. The people who were gathered there would have understood about Jesus talking about mass. They were familiar with the Greek plays of that time, and the vigil would be strong in their minds. They would be remembering the actors who wore masks to, hold, to hide who they were, and the masks that were used to hide the true nature of each speaker. Jesus even uses an alarming word in his description of the pious people that were there. By using the word hypocrite, Jesus would have created for the hearer an image of someone pretending to be something or someone they were not. Most of those gathered would have known who Jesus was really talking about. They would have shot quick glances over to the religious leaders to those who are in their long robes and adorned with bright colors and covered in symbols. The crowd would easily see that Jesus was saying not to display a false piety. He was telling them not to try to impress the person next to them with how righteous or holy they are. And that would have been good news for the regular people that were gathered there in that large crowd. The regular people would have all looked on at the religious leaders and felt vastly inferior. They would have seen them in the synagogue and parading toward the offering plate. And they would have seen them dropping in their large bags of money. The regular people would have seen the Pharisees standing on the corner praying and lifting up their hands towards heaven. And they would have seen how supposedly pious people act. And they would have seen that they could never hope to reach a level of that piety, that they would never be that righteous, not like the righteous religious leaders. When Jesus says, don't be a hypocrite, he struck a nerve in the hearts of the fishermen and of that woman who was struggling to feed her family, in the person that was, who was not able to give large sum of money, and in the simple farmer and in the tent maker that was gathered there. Not only that, it struck a nerve with the Pharisees and the religious leaders who were there too. 
that same young rabbi who asked this question earlier would have turned to his teacher, to his mentor, and whispered, is he talking about us? Are we the hypocrites? Are we the one with masks? Maybe on the other side of that older rabbi, there was someone who had been fasting. Everybody around would have known what exactly they were doing. Everyone would have known that they were so very pious because they made sure that everyone knew, was to know. Perhaps Jesus even set his eyes on this person when he said that fasting should be done in private. And when he told them that you should not look like you're fasting, but to instead appear as if fasting is for your own personal approach to a holier life, not for others to see and say what a holy person this is. These religious leaders were storing up treasures here on earth, quite literally. And none of what they did was lasting before God. None of God's goodwill was gained by their sacrifice or their suffering. They weren't cleaning up their rooms because company was coming in. Instead, they were shoveling everything they could into the closet and then spraying the room with air freshener and then declaring that all was done. Making matters even worse, they were saying for others to do it just like they did. In the same way, putting a cross of ashes on our forehead is not cleaning our own rooms. Placing ashes on your forehead is recognizing that there is a need to start the cleaning. And Lent is a journey of renewal and spiritual revival. Putting ashes on our, your forehead should be a sign not to others, but to the one who looks back at you from the mirror. These crosses that we put on our foreheads are a sign of us taking those first steps in that journey. If they're not, then they are just hollow in meaning as a person who would live everything, who lived every, anything but a religious life, but would make sure that they went to their church early on the day to get their ashes and then parade around work so that all could see what a pious person that they were. This is a person that would wear a mask of righteousness but never experience the meaning or the reality that their spiritual journey was starting at that moment that the cross was placed. Then why do we do this? Why take a visible and outward sign and display it for all the world to see? We don't do it for the world to see. We do it to prove how right we do not do it to prove how righteous or pious or religious we are. We do it because we know that we are sinners. We do it because we know that Jesus is the only cure for our sin problem. We do it because we want to look in the mirror and see a person who has made that first conscious step towards renewing our minds and our spirits. We do it to make a difference in our own lives and to make a difference in the lives around us. We place that cross on our forehead as a promise to God that reminds us that the journey has just begun. And ashes are a wonderful symbol of this because ashes throughout scripture have been used to indicate repentance, a change of mind, a change of direction, and a change of heart. These crosses mark the beginning of our own Lenten journey and of our own renewal. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen.
Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in the communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with all of creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to be to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to be a dis- to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Your past un- our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who came after us, who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we giving eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you have ashes at the ready, please mark the forehead of each person with the cross of ashes, saying, Remember your dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember your dust, and to dust you shall return.
Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit and support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying towards baptism, and call us all to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, let the church say amen, amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please share the bread, saying, The body of Christ given for you. Then please share the wine or grape juice, saying, The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days, 
renew us in the gift of baptism, that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those who are in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God blesses us and sends us in mission to the world. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn for this service is Eternal Love, Lord of Love, Behold Your Church. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. This concludes our service for Ash Wednesday. Please join us on Sunday mornings, uh, either on YouTube or on our Facebook. On Facebook, we gather together at 9.20 uh, on a watch party uh, to be with each other for our, uh, our worship service. And on YouTube, our service is available on our YouTube channel at any time. Please check those out, and I look forward to seeing you again this weekend. Blessings upon you this, the rest of your week.